Hi everyone, in this video, we are going to discuss this set A and we have to prove that it is a compact subset of R2D where it is a Euclidean distance. So here I have written a given information. We have a matrix space R2D where D is the Euclidean distance. We have this set A, getting A is equal to XY belongs to R2, which will satisfy this condition. One more thing they are given that is A and B are positive real numbers. We have to prove that A is compact subset of R2D. So let me mention here to prove that A is compact set in R2D. So this thing we have to prove. Okay. So let us try to understand what is a given set A. X square by A square plus Y square by B square is equal to 1. It represents an ellipse. So we have an ellipse like this, okay, this type of ellipse we have, which cuts x axis at point A0 minus A0, it cuts y axis at point 0B, 0 minus B, right. So this type of ellipse we have, we have to prove it is compact set. See, there is one important result in R2D. So let me write here, in R2D, a set is compact if and only if it is close and bounded, close and bounded. So if you have any compact set in R2D, then it is close and bounded or if it is close and bounded, then we can say it is compact. Here we have to prove the given set A is compact, then it is enough to prove that the set is close and bounded. So we can say it is compact, right? So let me mention here, it is enough to prove that, enough to prove that A is close and bounded in R2D. Okay. So first of all, we will prove that it is bounded and then we will prove that it is close. First, we will prove that A is bounded. A is bounded. So now the question is how to prove the set is bounded. So here we take any arbitrary point. What we do? We take any arbitrary point from the set and we prove that its norm, its norm, let me write properly, x, y, its norm is less than or equal to some positive real number m, then we can say the set is bounded, right? So let us take one point. Let x, y belongs to a. So I have taken any arbitrary point of a. x, y belongs to a. So definitely it will satisfy the condition of a. So therefore, I, what can I write here? x square by a square plus y square by b square is equal to 1. So this is very important information. So that's why I'm calling it as equation number one. What we have to prove? We have to prove that norm x, y less than or equal to some positive real number m. Okay, I'm going to prove it. Just make a screenshot of it. Then I will go further. That means here we are in search of m. Okay, we are in search of m. So what will I do? Let me write here. Let I'm choosing our m. So m is maximum of a and b. Whatever the maximum value of a and b, that will be our m. Getting? So here a and b are positive real numbers. So obviously m is positive. m is maximum. So that's why obviously m is greater than or equal to a and m is greater than or equal to b. So what will I do? I will take square of both sides. So therefore m square greater than or equal to a square, m square greater than or equal to b square. So basically all M, A, B are positive real numbers. So no need to worry about inequalities. Those will be maintained. Let us take reciprocals. So therefore, 1 by M square less than or equal to 1 by A square. When you take reciprocal inequality will get changed. Same thing will be here. So for first inequality, I will multiply both sides by X square. And for second, I will multiply by Y square. So x square by m square less than or equal to x square by a square y square by m square less than or equal to y square by b square. Okay. 
see we are multiplying by square of some real number so those will be definitely non-negative so you can say inequality will be maintained so let us add now so therefore x square by m square i am adding now plus y square by b square less than or equal to i am adding right hand sides now is square x square by square plus y square by b square but see if our point x y here already we have mentioned x y belongs to a so x square by a square plus y square by b square is equal to 1 and it is true for all x y actually all x y belongs to a so what is our conclusion x square by m square plus y square by b square less than or equal to 1 okay actually it is for all x y belongs to a let me call it as inequality number 2 so this is a impo important information uh, somewhere yes here should be m square right yes here should be m square yes that is correct now see uh, do you remember our target our target is to prove the set is bounded it means we have to prove that norm x y should be less than or equal to some uh, positive real number okay that thing i am going to do just make a screenshot of it then i will go further so let us consider norm now let me mention consider norm x y okay so we are familiar with the definition of norm the definition of norm is square root of x square plus y square here i will adjust m square i will simply multiply and divide by m square so it is square root of m square x square by m square plus y square by m square getting yes see simply i added uh, multiplied and divided by m square but see inequality number two says its value less than or equal to one so this is less than or equal to square root of m square into one since its value is less than or equal to one so obviously its value is m so therefore norm x y less than or equal to m and this is true for all x y belongs to a since x y is any arbitrary element of a so that's why it is true for all x y belongs to a so this is definition of bounded set so therefore i can declare therefore a is bounded okay a is bounded so in this way uh, we proved that a is bounded here m is clearly positive real number since m is maximum of a and b and a and b are both of them are positive right see we proved a is bounded so our second target is to prove that a is close now to prove that a is close see tell me when we say the set is close we can say the three definitions either we can say if the complement is open then we say the set is close. The second option, if A contains all its limit points, then we say the set is close. And the third condition is, or third option is, if A is equal to A bar, then we can say A is close. So let us prove the second, third one. So that is to prove that A is equal to A bar. So now we have to prove simply A is equal to A bar, then we can say A is close. Okay, make a screenshot of it, then we will go further. So tell me now, when we say two sets are equal, here we have to prove A is equal to A bar and we have to prove these two sets are equal. That means we have to prove first set is subset of second and the second set is subset of first. Then we say both are equal. So which one is obvious? So let me mention clearly A is subset of A bar. So let me call it as three. A subset of A bar since definition of A bar is A union A dash that means A is already involved in the definition of A bar so that's why obviously it is subset of A bar so now to prove that now to prove that A bar subset of A then we can say uh, both of them are equal getting so now how to prove A bar is subset of A we will take one point from A bar and we will prove that it is in A. So let us take one point. Let PQ belongs to A bar. So PQ is in A bar. That means PQ is, an, is in a closure of A. So therefore, see one result already we have proved in our previous video. So that result I am going to use. 
so there exist a sequence there exists a sequence x n y n in a so this is the sequence x n y n in a such that such that x n y n converges to p q getting the point see one result already we have proved if you have any point in a closure then definitely we can find a sequence of points of a which converges to that point getting so here also we got one point from closure so definitely we will find some points of a so which will converge to pq so let me draw one diagram so the concept will be clear to you suppose this is one set a we have we have a point pq here which is in a closure of a so we can find a sequence of points of a so the first term second term third term in this way so that sequence will converge to pq getting so th that is the result which we already seen in previous videos so because of that i could write it okay so there is no more space to write make a screenshot of it then i will go further see now i am going to use some basic results of convergent sequences so we have a sequence in r2 which converges to pq it means the first compo component sequence will converge to p and the second component sequence y n will converge to q so let, let me mention so therefore x n converges to p and y n converges to q right let us take square so therefore x n square will converge to p square and y n square will converge to q square right so let us divide by some constant terms so that means we can write here x n square by a square will converge to p square by a square so that means i am multiplying by a scalar 1 by a square so i got this one so these are all basic results of convergent sequences those uh, we are using here and y n square by b square will converge to q square by b square right so simply i multiplied by 1 by b square so the corresponding se sequence will converge to q square by b square see if two convergent sequence we have if you add them then it will be again convergent sequence so let us add them so therefore x n square by a square plus y n square let me write y n square by b square will converge where p square by a square plus q square by b square ready right? so uh, we added them so that's why the, uh, that sequence will converge to this one but see basically x n y n is a sequence of points of a we have taken points from a basically so th obviously those will satisfy the condition of a what is the condition of a this one ready right? so but let me mention but x n y n belongs to a for all n belongs to set of natural number so therefore by definition of a we can write x n square by a square plus y n square by b square is equal to 1 get it for all n belongs to set of natural number that means what is value of this bracket simply 1 the value of this bracket is 1 that means it is a constant sequence since all terms are 1 you can say here this is true for all n so here we get a constant sequence which is 1 so obviously it will converge to 1 so let me mention here make a screenshot of it then i will go further so therefore we can say this is a constant sequence so therefore that x n square by a square plus y n square by b square will converge to 1 since it is a constant sequence we got but see already we have mentioned something that it converges to this one but then by uniqueness of limit that means if you have any convergent sequence then it will converge to a single point cannot be cannot converge to two points here we are saying the sequence converges to this point there we are saying sequence converges to one that means actually both of them must be same so therefore that p square by a square plus q square by b square must be one getting again that condition is satisfied so therefore we can declare that pq point pq belongs to a since it satisfies the condition actually we started with one point pq from a bar and finally we proved that it is in a so therefore we can write 
therefore that a bar subset of a this is 4 since statement 3 we are saying a subset of a bar in 4 we are saying a bar subset of a so therefore from 3 and 4 a is equal to a bar but you can say this is a definition of closed set so therefore a is close in r2d so let us combine both parts now in first part we proved that a is bounded set in second part we are saying a is closed set so therefore a is closed and bounded set in r2d but we are familiar with that result in r2d if the set is closed and bounded definitely we can say it is compact so therefore a is compact in r2d so in this way we proved that the given set a is a compact subset of r2d where d is a euclidean distance make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you see you